We humans are storytellers. We derive meaning, paint pictures, and teach lessons with story. One of these great stories is that of Siddhartha Gautama, the man who would come to be known as the Buddha. Siddhartha was a young prince living in India sometime between 600 and 400 years BCE. He lived a sheltered life of luxury, wanting nothing and having everything he could imagine. But even with all this lavish wealth, Siddhartha became an angry young man. One day he was bored and mad enough that he took a trip into the outside world and experienced the suffering of the common men and women. This experience would ultimately lead Siddhartha to leave the safety of the palace, denounce all of his worldly possessions, and live as what we would today call a bum. Initially, he thought that living as a poor man would bring enlightenment. However, he found, after about six years, this was not any more true than living as a rich man. After all this time living on the streets, the future Buddha would sit down under a Bodhi tree and meditate for what is said to have been 49 days. After undergoing temptations, Siddhartha would come away with the Four Noble Truths and gain enlightenment. The first of these Noble Truths is that life is largely filled with suffering. You can suffer as a rich man, feeling angry and trapped, and you can suffer as a poor man, never knowing where your next meal is going to come from. But either way, there will be suffering. In today's world, suffering can be viewed as problems, issues, or challenges. There is no part of life that will not include problems to overcome. If you want to be successful and make a lot of money, you have to be willing to accept the suffering of long hours and hard work. If you want to own a home, you will have to put up with the pain of paying the mortgage and repairing all of the issues that will arise. And there will be issues. If you want to find a life partner, you will have to overcome the struggles of building a relationship and possibly raising children. If you want to lose weight and get fit, you will have to be willing to make the gym a priority and change your eating habits. Yes, there will always be trade-offs and challenges, even with us motorcyclists. Traveling by motorcycle involves putting up with traffic, watching for suicidal animals, dealing with weather changes, finding lodging, and fixing mechanical breakdowns. As someone who likes to plan ahead, I have an ongoing battle with those who like to wing it. I always say, look, you are going to have to make certain decisions, like how far you ride and where you stay. You can make those at home in the privacy and comfort of your home, or you can make them on the road. However, either way, you are going to have to make those decisions. There will always be challenges to overcome and lessons to be learned. This is the nature of life. The person who becomes successful at any given undertaking is the one who accepts and learns to enjoy the inherent challenges. I am successful at getting to the gym on a regular basis and still building muscle in my 60s because I enjoy the pain and the challenge of lifting. On the other hand, I do not enjoy the pain of pounding and compressing my joints while running, so I don't do it. This is also the reason I don't like to camp while traveling. Yes, there is pain when paying a hotel bill, but for me, it is not as great as hauling extra gear, setting it up, packing every day, dealing with wet gear, and not sleeping well. Those that like the pain associated with camping excel at it. Those of us who do not enjoy the suffering, choose not to camp. The key here is that we have to come to grips with the suffering of life. We have to understand that it is not about eliminating your challenges, but in picking the right ones. In reality, we really don't want a pain-free life or suffering-free life. Without challenge, there are no good times and no growth. We know good times because we know the bad. We know loneliness because we know love. We know happiness because we experience sadness. We humans inherently need to overcome obstacles. 
Probably the greatest cyclist who ever lived, Eddie Merckx, once said, the race is won by the rider who can suffer the most. And if we're honest with ourselves, this is partially why we choose to travel by motorcycle. At least I know it is for me. Right? Part of it is a challenge. It's a challenge that I can overcome the distance that I'm having to travel, the uncomfortable nature of riding a motorcycle, of fighting with the elements. It's about overcoming yourself. Even though life will always include some degree of suffering, we can choose, at least to a large degree, the kind of pain and suffering we allow into our life. There will always be things we cannot control. Fate will deal all of us some kind of heavy body blow over the course of our lives. Health issues may arise, loved ones may die, motorcycles may break down, and Mother Nature may bring devastation. We cannot control or avoid these acts of God. All we can do is adapt, and ultimately, how we overcome or fail to overcome these obstacles will determine our character. Mark Manson, author of the best-selling book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep, points out that happiness comes from solving problems. He writes, happiness comes from solving problems. The key word there is solving. If you're avoiding problems or you feel you don't have any problems, then you are going to make yourself miserable. Many people either choose to deny they have problems or like to point fingers at others as the cause of their suffering. These are easy outs which allow us to escape our troubles at least for a little while. But ultimately, we have to face our problems, and the longer we wait, the harder it will be to overcome them. We can also choose to add additional struggles to our lives with poor choices. Things like excessive use of alcohol, drugs, or gambling, choosing the wrong partners over and over again, and fighting with things that are completely out of our control. Wayne Dyer said this about self-inflicted suffering. If you are suffering in your life right now, I guarantee that this condition is tied up with some kind of attachment to how you think things should be going. Affirm, I release the need to determine how things should be. Attachment to being right creates suffering. When you have a choice to be right or to be kind, choose kind and watch your suffering disappear. Look around. This type of suffering is an epidemic in our society. Everyone is right and they feel the need to proclaim it loudly to the world. The sad thing is that none of this anger changes anything except to raise the blood pressure, anxiety, and suffering of the proclaimer. Looking back, I wish it had not taken me 60 years to figure this out. When most people are asked what they want out of life, we get similar answers. We all want to be happy and to be loved. Now, these are, of course, easy answers. But according to Manson, the more interesting question is what is the pain that you are willing to endure in order to get what you want? Who we are is largely determined by the kind and duration of struggle we are willing to endure and overcome. As a younger man, I was willing to suffer to start a business with my wife, educate myself, buy a home, and save for retirement. But now, as an older guy, I have no interest in going through those kinds of struggles. I am willing to battle the YouTube algorithm as long as it does not interfere with the enjoyment of travel. But when it starts doing that, well, then I'm done. Today, my preferred struggles are with getting up and hitting the gym, maintaining my home, writing scripts for videos, and figuring out where to ride on a warm spring day. I know, not much of a struggle, but that is the point. I put aside the arguments about politics and when the world is going to end and choose to struggle with keeping my body and mind fit so that I can enjoy my later years. I no longer choose to struggle with tilting at windmills. 
ride safe, and keep squeezing your lemon. Mm -hmm.